If you want to determine stress, there are basically three steps. First, we need to determine how much is the internal torque in the shaft. It might be very simple as the case that we see here. So the torque would be equal to the applied T. Sometimes the system is more complicated, like there are many different torques acting on the system, or there are different parts. In all those cases, we need to use the free body diagram. I'm going to explain that in details in the next slide. The second step would be determining the polar moment of inertia. And as I said, there are two equations, one for solid shaft and another one for the tubular shafts or hollow core shafts. And the last one, use the stress equation to determine how much stress. The stress equation is Tc over J. So torque multiplied by C divided by polar moment of inertia. All right? Now let me talk about free body diagram. Assume that we want to determine how much is the internal torque in this system. If we want to determine internal torque in the system, there are several steps. First, we need to cut the element at the section that we want to determine the internal torque at that section. Assume that we want to determine how much is internal torque in shaft one. Then I'm going to cut shaft two and consider left part or right part. Right part, left part is rest, not free. So I have to consider the right part as shown here. What if I want to determine internal torque in shaft two? I'm going to cut the shaft somewhere between B and C, and this would be the free body. If I want to determine how much is the internal torque in shaft three, I'm going to cut it from between C and D, and I would have this shape. That is the cut part. The second part would be putting the unknown force on the cut section. Here, we do not have any axial force, but we do have torques, internal torques. Internal torques are shown by double arrow. Double arrows are used instead of curved moments because those are easier to be shown on a plane. Okay? So I'm going to put unknown torques on the cut section. Do you remember what was the rule for axially loaded elements? Should I put the force outward from the surface or inward to the surface? It, was, it has to be outward. Same is true here. We always put the double arrows outward from the cut section. So I'm going to put unknown torque in cut section number one. Similar to that, I'm going to put unknown torque in section two and section three. The last part would be simply using the equilibrium equations. And the equilibrium equation that we have in torsional elements is simply sum of the torques should be equal to zero. And with that, we can determine what is, this, what is the value for the torque. The sign convention says if the torque, the double arrow torque, is outward from the cut surface, we assume that the torque is positive. It doesn't matter if the, the double arrow looks to the left side or the right side. So if I get positive sign for this torque, it means that, the map means that it is going outward from the cut section. The sign of torque is not important for shear stress, because shear stress this way or the opposite way, they are equal to each other. That, there's no difference on the materials, as opposed to what we had before in the axially loaded elements. In the axially loaded elements, the sign of stress is important because we have either compressive stress or tension stress. In torsional elements, it doesn't matter. However, if we want to determine deformations, we need to take care of the sign. So that is why sign convention is important for determining the twist or deformations in the shaft. We'll talk about them later. All right, with that, I'm going to solve a problem, then we can proceed to the next step. Assume that we have a system of shafts connected together that are subjected to different torques. We want to determine how much is the maximum shear stress in the entire shaft. The magnitude of the torques and the direction of the torques are provided. The shaft has a circular cross-section with a 20 millimeter diameter, and we want to determine how much is the maximum shear stress. The equation is simply Tc over J. Okay, J is, would be very easy to determine because that is pi diameter to the fourth over 32. C, similar, would be half of diameter. The question is, what is torque? And to determine torque, we need to use the free body diagram. All right? Let's use free body diagram. Let's start with shaft four, the shaft on the right <coughs> side. How can I determine torque in that shaft? I need to cut that shaft, take it out, 
And for that case, I'm going to consider the right side. It's easier for us to work with the double arrow. So I'm going to replace that torque TE with the double arrow. What would be the direction of that TE? We need to use the right hand rule. So bend your fingers toward the direction of the given moment torque. The thumb goes to the left. So I'm going to replace it with double arrow to the left side. The magnitude of this torque is given, right? Now let's talk about the cut section. At the cut section, we need to put unknown torque. What would be the direction of unknown torque here? To the left or to the right? <coughs> it has to be to the left because it is going outward from the surface. So they are both going to the left <coughs> side in this case. Now let's talk about segment three. For segment three, I need to cut that somewhere between C and D. And I would, this, and I would see this free body. If I want to replace TD, what would be the direction of the double arrow in this case? Now it is going to the right. But at the cut section, again, we have unknown torque, which we call that T3, the torque in shaft 3, going outward from the surface, going to the left side. Similar to that, we do the free body for segment 2. We put the double arrows for the external torques and the internal torque in the cut section. And the very last part would be this figure. And we would have these free body diagrams. How many free bodies do we have in total for this case? Four, because we have four shafts and we need to determine torques in those four shafts. Now, let's write down the equilibrium equations. Let's start with the top figure, the, the first one. In that figure, we need to write down the equilibrium equations. There are two torques. In this case, I can consider the left side as negative or the right side as negative, doesn't matter. Okay, we usually consider right positive, left negative. So let's consider that, but it will not change the final answer of your calculation or the sign of the calculation. So let's write down T4. T4 is unknown, and I'm gonna write down negative T4 because it is going to the left side. TE is given to be 14 Newton meter, and that gets negative sign because that is going to the left side, and that should be equal to zero. From that, we determine T4 is equal to negative 14 Newton meter. That is the magnitude of the internal torque in that segment. We can repeat that for figure two. In that case, we would have negative T3 plus TD, which is 24, minus TE, which is 14, should be zero. And that gives me T3 is equal to positive 10 Newton meter. Let's do that for figure three. In that case, we have negative T2 minus TC, which is 35 plus 24 minus 14 is equal to zero. And T2 would be equal to negative 25 Newton meter. And for the last part, we would have negative T1 plus 25 minus 35 plus 24 minus 14 is equal to zero, and that gives me T1 equal to zero. And that makes sense because the last shaft is free. It is not supported by anything. So the torque on that side should be zero. Otherwise, the, the system is not in equilibrium. So we have determined internal torques in the segments using the free body diagram. That is the only important part for this problem. The rest would be very easy. So I want to make sure we understand this part very well. Do we understand this part very well? OK. Now, you answered the last question, which is a little bit tricky for this part. I have four torques. Which one should I use for the calculation of stress <coughs> if I want to determine how much is the maximum shear stress? Um, I don't think anyone goes for 0, also negative 14. So how many of you go for positive 10? How many of you go for negative 25? We work with the absolute maximum value of the torque because sine of torque is just changing the direction of stress, the shear stress, which is not important <coughs> for us. OK, so the maximum torque is the maximum absolute values of torque that we got here. And that would be 25 Newton meter. And I use this, first I convert that into Newton millimeter, and then I use this torque for determining the maximum shear stress. We know that the maximum shear stress occurs on the outer surface of the shaft. And to determine that, we use TC over J. Torque is determined, and we need to determine C and J. 
C would be half of diameter because we want to determine shear stress on the outer surface. In this case, it would be 10 millimeter. And J is pi over 32 diameter to the fourth. And we get <coughs> this number. This is 20. The answer is right. I just wrote that it's just a typo, but the answer is correct. And shear stress would be torque multiplied by C divided by J, and we get this number, 15.91 megapascal. As you may notice, the important part of this problem is, is using the free body diagram properly, is using the free body diagram in the right way. The rest would be simply plugging the values into the stress equation.